go over crude oil. All right, same setups as yesterday, same setups all in 2017, 16, 18, 2019, same thing. The trend chart is just wonderful. It's only picked two retracement trades this morning. It's two for two this morning since midnight. And here we go again. Let's go over these two setups, making sure you know how that we like to trade the system. Let's not look at market profile right now because we use that for confluence. Let me just blow the trend chart up, make sure you guys are on the, the right side of the market. The trend filter has many, 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 many filters built into it. When these candles turn green or red, that's not just because of a Renko bar. There's multiple indicators that have to agree with supply and demand. The one thing I learned a long time ago, uh, I learned about supply and demand, the order flow of the market. So when I was a small order execution trader trading against institutional traders, I really learned how to trade order flow. So what I did when Ninja 8 came out, I made a trend chart. And this trend chart is incorporated, uh, what, what is included with this trend chart are all these filters over the many, many years that I traded these markets that agree together at the same point in time, same point in time. So when these filters agree, they turn a red Renko or a green Renko. And what that does, it allows us to be more visual traders because this is electronically traded markets. Electronically traded markets means the pit traders have no, uh, um, their hands in the market like they used to in the 80s and the 90s and, and so on. So now everything's order flow electronically traded markets, all these algorithms, hedge funds, prop firms, amateur professional traders, all the volume comes in and what it does, it spits out these red bars and green bars on my trend filter. How does that help us as traders? It helps us because like all my members know is that when I was a guest speaker in Las Vegas at the trade show, uh, a lot of traders that I met, nearly 6,000 traders were there, almost all the traders that I met and talked to and when I was speaking in front of the audience is that they are counter trend traders and why do they counter trend trade because most books are written on fading the market most books are written on doing stochastics divergence the moving average convergence divergence trade station has almost a thousand indicators it gives you for free right now why do you think that is why do you think they give you those indicators for free because every indicator works once but not every indicator works on a daily basis you have to trade order flow so that's the difference between trading as a trader in in the uh, um, with the professional traders and traders that are novice traders, novice traders keep thinking they can catch the high and the low of the market. You always know a novice trader when they say, "Hey, what do you do? I like to buy low, sell high." No, you cannot buy low, sell high because it's very difficult to do that. No one can do that. Very, very, very difficult to catch the high and catch the low. What we can do as traders is the market leaves a footprint, and what we can do, and this is how my trend filter works is it looks for higher lows and lower highs in the market. And that's one of my ingredients that makes my trend filter work so well. If I got a swing that's higher, that has a higher low, it's gonna be printing green bars. If I have a swing that's a lower high, it's gonna be printing red bars, and that's just one criteria. It's gotta come up with several other criteria before it even prints that bar. So my point is, is I look at order flow. Instead of trying to buy the low, sell the high, I wanna buy high, sell higher. I wanna short low, buy lower. Now. The average trader will think I'm crazy when I say that, but the bottom line is, is that's how you do well in these markets. What does that mean? If you look at these two arrows that I posted, this is buying high, selling higher. This is buying higher, last trade, buying high, because the market's already moved up from 58 or 56.80 all the way up to 57, you know, 50 before the second buy came in. So you are buying high and essentially selling higher. I'm not trying to sell this high to catch this little fade or this counter trend trade. I'm not trying to sell or fade this move because I'm smarter than that. I'm more educated than that. I know that the market tells me what to do based upon my filters that I built into the trend filter. So that's the beauty of Ninja 8. Ninja 8 has allowed me to program all my knowledge over the years and years of trading these markets since the late 80s, early 90s when I started getting into this stuff. I started with soybeans and corn, the actual commodity, and then it allowed me to program the trend filter. So the trend filter is not a joke. It's a very serious tool to use on catching the wrongly positioned traders. So how do we do it? Since you know that I got all these filters built into my trend filter, it's not a standard Renko bar, what's the easiest way to capture these moves? The easy way to capture the moves is looking for an opposite color candle to form against the trend filter. When an opposite color candle form, then I know this is not a standard Renko bar, 
that my filters, my supply and demand filters that are built into this are telling me that I got people trying to fade the market. I got traders out there that think they're smarter than the market and they think they're going to catch the high each time. Well, this trader right here, these traders right here, when it turned red with my filter, they didn't catch the high. They got stopped out. These traders right here went down a little bit and then they got taken out also. So what we do is we predicate our trades based upon counter trend traders. Why? Because that creates order flow. And order flow is what we want to participate in. So when you get, uh, I only have two setups and I just sent yesterday this exact trade setup. What did I tell you traders to do and all the traders out there? I said, listen, let the trend filter set it up first. So let's look at this second trade. I'll blow it up here. We've been two for two this morning on retracement trades. This is called a retracement trade. I only have two trades. I have a momentum trade and a retracement trade. So let's look at the first one. What is a retracement trade? A retracement trade is when we're catching the wrongly positioned traders. We're catching the counter trend traders. This is when they get caught. So that's my first trade. We only have two trade setups we're gonna do one all in 2019, 2020 etc all the way through so we want to catch the rolling position traders on a retracement trade now remember I got the filter already built into the market into my trend filter to tell us when they come in so the first one's a retracement trade catching the counter trend traders okay so I got three moving averages on my trend filter that tells me that what the trend of the market is now moving averages everybody knows I think they're worthless by nature not support and resistance not crossover systems but they're great for trend direction. So I use them for trend direction. I got a small intermediate and a larger MA. If the market is above all three MAs, and we've been above it since midnight, the open versus close, the body of the candle, not the wicks. I don't care if the wicks get below it, the highs and lows. Just as long as the body of the candle closing above all three MAs, that's the strongest position in the market that you can be in. You can't get in a stronger position because all my filters are meeting at the same point in time. So we're above. We're closing. We're above, above, above. As soon as we get to this price point in time, and I see a red bar that prints, it closes. That means all my filters are agreeing that we have a what? We have counter trend traders coming in. Right when I see that, I look to my chart next to the right immediately. I look where my SIM dots are, my blue SIM dots, because we're looking for a buy. I like to see the market come within one or two ticks of those SIM dots in a fib arrow to form. This stopped to the exact tick, to the exact tick. You'll see that all the time. My arrow formed, you had a nice trade to the upside. So what you're going to do when you see this, when you see a retracement trade, a retracement trade, you're going to see when an offset color candle comes in against the trend filter, that's catching the counter trend traders. You immediately look for the retracement. Right when you see it retrace in a couple ticks of SIM dots, then what I want to do is I want to go to my market delta. My market delta, I need to get pulled in. I need to close a portion of the body of the candle close above. There's your portion of the body candle close above. That is your entry. Your stop loss is two ticks below the swing low. Some traders like to go right at the swing low. That's fine. I even have traders that's doing right there to keep a real small stop at the entry candle. If you put your stop right at the entry candle, because that's a partial candle close above my small MA, make sure you know what if it does the W bottom, you're probably going to have to get a small stop, four to six ticks, and get back in because M tops and W bottoms tend to take out the low of that candle, and then they go. So, But normally, almost... 75, 80% of trades, that stop will be perfect for a small stop. I like keeping my stops down here. That's how I do things. But you don't have to do that at the swing low. I keep it two ticks below the swing low. You can actually move it up there if you want to be very conservative on your stops. But that is the exact bar entry right there. Look at the trade we had this morning. So essentially what we're doing is on the retracement trades, we're catching the rolling position traders. Offset color candle comes in. Find out where my SIM dots are to the right to get a perfect symmetry trade. Now, can they get below symmetry? Can I bust through symmetry and still get a good trade? Yes, you can. Just make sure you keep your stops in because this is a perfect symmetrical or, or symmetry trade. Counter trend traders come in, stops on my SIM dots, we're off and running. And I get this question all the time. Well, can I just use the SIM dots to buy and sell? No, you'll get killed. That is the symmetry of the market is not the order flow of the market. Symmetry just gives an added bonus where to buy and sell the area then market delta pulls us in. The key is my trend filter. I've got all the ingredients built into the trend filter. Okay, so that's one setup. The second setup we have, it's called a momentum trade. Now, a momentum trade is where you come down and you are, let's say the market's too strong. So the second trade is a momentum trade. 
a momentum trade happens when you don't get an offset color bar. I call it a Momo trade. I call it a Momo trade. This is where the market's too strong or too weak. Now, now if this happens, we need to be able to get in the market because it may not retrace on a deeper, deeper retracement. This is more of a shallow retracement. So if this happens, what we want to do is we want to get in into a momentum trade. Now, how do we spot a momentum trade? A momentum trade or a Momo trade happens when green bar, green bar, and then it retraces and touches my small MA. If it touches intra, intra bar like this and the arrow fires, tick, 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 down, touch. In other words, if I come down here as we're ticking and I touch a small MA, tick, 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 down to 5760, it touches it and I get an arrow that forms way over here on the far right chart, that's how I use my small arrow chart over here. I use that if the market's too strong, if it's all green. Like, for example, here, if I'm all green, 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 I'm looking for it to retrace. I didn't get a momentum set up, but if a momentum set up came anywhere, look at the space between the small MA and the candle. If I would have came down and touched this MA right here, inch your bar, and I would have fired a candle to my far right chart, that's my MOMO chart. It's my MOMO chart. It's my retracement chart. So this chart I use for retracement trading when I get an opposite color candle, retracement trading, and I use this chart over here for MOMO trading, momentum trading. That's how you just decide which chart you're going to trade off with the Fibonacci arrows. That's a momentum trade versus a retracement trade. So if I get an offset color candle comes in, then right here, then I'll immediately look to the chart to the right for a retracement trade because I want to see where the sim, sim dots are, right? Because the sim dots will catch these trades over and over again, all right? So let me see on the downside, see if you get one on the downside so you can see. We've been in such a hard uptrend. Here we go. So the downside will be the same thing. You'll look for the sim dots to hit and you can get into the trade that way, all right? So the upside is the opposite. Red, you'll look for red dots. Uh, buy signals, you'll look for the, they just formed right there again, 5756 for the next retracement trade. All right? So that's what we want to try to do. We want to try to look at those two markets. Well, those two markets, we're going to look for a retracement trade and a momentum trade. And then we use market delta on both of these trade setups. So market delta, right when an offset color bar comes in, I come with a couple ticks of symmetry. I want to look for a pull in on my market delta. All right? You want to see a positive market delta right here, positive 161. See that partial candle close right there? Partial candle close on our last buy setup. Here it caught the rolling position traders again there. Your stop loss would be two ticks below this swing, and there she goes. Okay? That's exactly the same chart I sent you guys last night on trading two setups, and it worked again today.